As coronavirus continues to make headlines, it's easy to get lost in the information. Dr. Nasia Safdar, Medical Director of Infection Control and Prevention at UW Health is with us tonight to help us try to make some sense of the virus and the current situation. Doctor, so welcome. good to see thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, especially thank you. now. I'm sure you're busier than you've ever been, so we're <laughs> yeah. very grateful that you took thank the you. time. So this situation is fluid and seems to be changing by the day. How worried do you think we should be here about coronavirus? I think, you know, in terms of the risk to the general public, I would say that's really low at this point. But I think for health systems and for the communities to prepare themselves for what might be our version of COVID-19 in our community, um, I think it's important to be prepared. So if it turns out we don't need to use all those preparedness efforts, wonderful. But we don't want to be caught in a situation where we have a number of cases and we don't quite know how to handle them. How are you preparing? So I think we look at it from three viewpoints. There's the space, the infrastructure, the healthcare worker force, and then the supplies. And so all of those things have to be aligned. And you have these tiered plans where you think about what happens if we see a handful of cases, what happens when we escalate, and what happens when we further need to escalate. So um, it needs to be, to be able to account for all possible scenarios. And if we don't encounter all of them, wonderful, but that's what the preparedness is about. And then there's an interesting situation in California where a person who did not travel to China and had no known contact with any carriers uh, tested positive for the virus. So what is the significance of that specific case? I think the importance of that is that it shows community transmission and that isn't something that we've seen in this country at this point. We've seen it in other places. It just suggests the ease with which the virus can move from person to person. And if we don't have something in particular to anchor it with, such as exposure to a known case or travel, then we worry about how do we screen the general population or how do we figure out if somebody has symptoms, is it this or is it any number of other viruses that are also circulating this time of year. How should an individual prepare for themselves and their family. I think the big things for this are just as you would for any other viral infectious condition. So you want to make sure that you have over-the-counter supplies ready in the event that you fall sick. Uh, you want to make sure you have adequate hand hygiene supplies, masks if necessary. Ideally, one should self-isolate in a, in a setting where you're not exposing other people until you're well. Uh, and then respiratory etiquette, you know, those are the things that we usually tell people to do, and it's no different in this case. Vaccination against influenza is always a valuable thing. Do you think it's a matter of when, not if, with this? I think so. I mean, I think just what we've seen globally is that viruses don't respect man-made boundaries, and if it's in some countries of the world, there's no reason to believe it wouldn't be here as well. Hmm. What are the symptoms? It's a respiratory It is event. largely a respiratory condition. You might have fever, which might range from low grade to high grade. There's a cough usually. For people that have more severe symptoms, there might be shortness of breath, there might be symptoms of pneumonia. Uh, but generally, it's uh, very much like influenza. Hmm. So how do you know if it isn't? Yeah. Influenza. It's hard to tell. Thus far, what we people have been doing is screening for travel and exposure, which have been the ways that we've determined is it more likely to be this versus influenza. Once it becomes widespread, there will be no way to tell besides testing people. Well, and there are only uh, several states that have the ability to do the testing. Are we That's one right. of them? Uh, we do not yet have the testing available. So. So we is send the test to the CDC. I think it is. I mean, I know a number of uh, entities and people are working on this, but uh, certainly because we can't tell clinically whether it's COVID-19 or something else, it would be very valuable to have the test available so we could do it in a timely manner. And it's a worldwide event is the, is the other problem. That's right, yeah. So yeah. do you think the coverage of this is uh, appropriate or do you think it's, it's borderline? The news coverage? Alarmist, yeah. I think in some respects it, it is a little bit alarmist, and but that may be because people in healthcare have been thinking about things like this for a long time and have gone through several other infectious conditions where we had to plan. But I can understand how the general public might be concerned when they see media reports that seem to suggest that we're in deep trouble at this point, which I don't think is accurate. And Wall Street doesn't help that situation That's either. right, yeah. All right, well, wash your hands, be vigilant. Be stay prepared. From, I mean, stay that's really people. the message. Get ready. Yeah, be prepared for anything. Doctor, that's thanks right. for being yeah. with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming. Soon. Great to see you. Yeah, you too. We'll be right back.